Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Everdon 2. Yeah, without further ado, let's resume our exploration here. Actually, almost we've almost made it full circle here. Oh, there's something interesting here. No, this is odd. Oh, I guess. Uh, it looks like someone took a very large knife, cut a room out of someone's home, carried it here, and dropped it. Well, that's one way to describe it. Um, apart from a dusting of sand, the floor and furniture looked nice and new. However, a scattering of bones on the floor makes you think that someone was in this room when it was transported, and that they did not do well after their arrival. Huh. I wonder if that's actually what happened, though. And... Unfortunately... That's nothing special there to be found. Did I miss something over here? Doesn't look like it. Uh, thought, oh, thought some things there. Oh, what's that? Um, what does it say? In infected? Something? You were close to the north face of the rocky spire that contains monitor base D. Uh, okay. I was close to it before, but now I get this message. Um, something lives around here. You can see the prints of its massive feet. Oh, I guess I might refer to that uh, titan there, or if it was one. Mm. A trail of dark, trampled land leads toward the spire. It is scattered with bones. Something large has picked this area as its hunting ground. Okay, thanks for the warning. There is this path. And the actual entrance to the base is here. Well, I guess I'll save. Even though... Having just started the episode, I already saved only moments ago, but that's okay. Guess he must be patrolling along this path, possibly? Yeah, there it is. Infected Titan. Well, let's see how tough it actually is, huh? Um, just in case, I'm gonna open with placing a pylon here. Trying to stun it. It resisted. Um, move away, just out of you know cautiousness. I see thing. Okay, you have found the creature who stomped out this path through the corruption. Unfortunately, he has found you too. He is a titan. He chose to enter the corruption, and the corruption entered him. He is a pitiful warped creature, half blind, his limbs twisted, and most oddly, there is a segment of chitin growing. Or ki kitten, chitin. I never know how to pronounce this. Actually, I think it's more like. Kitten. You know what? And it's chitin, apparently. Um, yeah. I mean, I used the opportunity and looked it up. So maybe I'll remember it from now on. We'll see. Uh, most oddly, there is a segment of chitin growing in the middle of his chest. An infection of insect matter. The skin around it is red and torn where the creature scratched at it. When he gets close enough to see you, he lets out a mad roar. Gar! Meat! Drew meat at last! Then he lumbers toward you, waving a huge chunk of wood. That's kind of sad, actually. But, uh, yeah, obviously that's not going to keep me from fighting him. Not that I have any choice in the matter. Alright. Thanks for the acid. Thanks for the crit. That's actually gonna be over relatively quickly, it looks like. It doesn't have any major tricks up its sleeves. Uh, the Titan lets out a roar of pain. He bends over and grabs the plate of chitin growing, growing out of his chest. For a moment, he seems to have forgotten you. Huh? Bends over and begins to howl in pain. Okay. Oh, it's, it has spines now, that's unfortunate. Oh, and it reflects spells too. Ouch, yeah, spine shield and reflection. If I had actually paid attention, I might have noticed. Um, I guess? Okay, well, missing is one option as well. It's done resisted. I don't know, should I even... Let's try this. 
Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if uh, AoE spells would actually get reflected, but they do. Uh, the Titan lets go of his chest and straightens up. The strange power in the chitin plate has left him feeling energized. Actually, energized might not be the right word. He is lost in a whirling berserk frenzy, maddened with pain, hunger, and rage. Uh-oh. Okay. Battle frenzy, but he's not completely healed. Which is... Kind of what I... Oh, ho, 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 ho. Holy crap. Ouch! What the hell? This is... Not great. I mean, how many actions were those? Like, four in a row? That's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, attack him, I suppose? Yeah, I was afraid this was gonna happen. Oh my god. Thanks for focusing on my, um, my turrets there. Maybe I should have healed them, actually. Okay, they, they uh, survived, that's good. Heal the turrets. Did I mention those are kind of overpowered? Um, oh, he activated his shield again, that's a kind of bad news. Oh, wait. Ranged attacks don't get reflected. Huh. Kill it. Oh, it's almost dead. So close. And... No, I missed it. Oh god. Oh god, no. No! No! <laughs> serious. You can't be serious. That, that final miss. Uh. Well. Um, I guess... Wait, no. I have quick save. There we go. All right, uh, let's try that again. I suppose. I don't know if, if like, oh, hello there. I don't know if there's something I will be doing like uh, fundamentally different, differently. Stun resisted, of course. Critical attack, yeah, yeah. I have found the creature. Um, I don't know. What did I build bef before? A snare or bolt flinger? Not sure. Probably bolt flinger. Should probably pay attention to uh, how much damage that actually deals. Have a 129 damage, not too bad. Uh, Icy Lance, 113, not too bad. Cleave. Huh. I'm damaging it really far before it... Before it actually... Or, this time I damaged it pretty far before it actually started using its special abilities. Now that I know this is a thing, we can do this. Uh, why don't you actually use Triumphant Roar? No reason not to use it, really. Attack. Yeah, I got reflected, that's fine. Actually, if he starts using his... his Earthquake, that might be a problem. Ouch, yeah, these spines are kind of a bad thing. Um, yeah, as expected, that did not work. Not confusion, maybe? Nope. Uh, okay. Battle Frenzy is bad enough as it is, but... He did not... Uh, he's not no longer um, reflecting stuff. Ouch. Um, should I? These are already hasted. Hmm. Maybe I should actually focus on dealing damage. 
It's looking good this time around. Ah, uh, yeah. Kalita is probably gonna die. Oh god, she did not actually die. There we go. That's how it should have gone the first time. Uh, with a final blow, you liberate the Titan from his tormented existence. He falls on his back, enabling you to see the strange chitin plate in his chest. Oh, let me guess. I'm gonna take that, and that's gonna be the weird uh, mutation like uh, artifact, I suppose, biological artifact. Uh, strange, it's much much smaller than it looked. It's an ovoid chunk of chitin, only about a foot across. You can also tell that it's glowing faintly. Monitor Base C might be interested in studying this odd magic. It's a short, gruesome operation, but you remove the plate, clean it off in the sand, and put it in a sack. Nice. Well, that was a tough battle. I like it. Had to actually use some resources. Well, not... Not as in, you know, actually using consumables. God forbid. I guess I could have done that, and that would probably have made things... Um, noticeably easier for me, but... Yeah, as long as I can beat an encounter with um, only my abilities, a little bit persistence, and and also let's face it, um, just luck of the draw, I suppose. Good dice rolls. I mean, why not do it that way, right? Let's also save, just in case there's there are more nasty surprises like that. Did he have anything in his camp? Because I couldn't help but notice that he didn't actually drop anything interesting at all. Some money, I suppose. That's about it. There was a crystal up here, though. I don't think I forgot about that. Alright. That's that. One last spot to check out. Maybe a second entrance? Yeah, it looks like it. With that, well, obviously there are the specimen chambers with this weird non-Euclidean set of entrances. Which I'm still not sure if it's uh, whether it's intentional or not. Uh, seems like a weird oversight, though, if it is one. Uh, you approach the main gate of Monitor Base D, a massive steel gate built into the east side of the spire. It was constructed to be strong enough to fend off a massive assault. However, the engineers did not predict that the attack might come in the form of a flood of lava. The rock crumbles all around it, uh, uh, and I mean, even if they had foreseen that, how would you counter that? What material is strong enough to withstand lava for any considerable amount of time, right? Anyway, um, the rock crumbles all around it, but the gate is still closed. It is more than strong enough to keep you out. You will need to find a different entrance out. Oh, okay, so I'll... I guess all that's left is to hope that either the back entrance is actually open, or I'll have to find a way through those specimen chambers. Might be a thing. A loud truck driving by. Don't know if you heard that. Okay, let's get closer. Um, more jammed sentinels. I think those are the same that we've seen before. Yeah, it seems about... Oh. Keep underestimating how quick they are. Stun it. Stun resist it. Move away. Kill it. No. Miss it. It's dead. It's fine. By which I mean it's not fine at all. Okay. Oh, he can't move at all. Darn it. Ouch. Ouch. Cleave? Yay! Um, don't know if there's... Deals more damage combined? Nah, probably not. Something like 90-ish damage. 91, I think. If you want to be super precise, but then who who wants to be that? Okay. I cannot move at all. It's fine. Heal himself. Uh, savage blow. Normal attack. Eh, I guess normal attack only dealt 65 in this case, so... Yeah, well. I could have moved. Uh, 
All right. Grab all those gems. Also, why don't I actually spend his uh, points here, giving more, giving more endurance? Um, well, maybe putting an actual point in here wouldn't hurt. Or should I focus entirely on on the passives? I guess either either would be viable. Increasing the skill makes its abilities far more effective. Well, I think I want to kind of do this. And I think I said I want to put two more points in here, right? To gain Blade Lash. Is that that? Do a powerful attack that knocks your opponent off balance, slowing and ensnaring it. I guess it's okay. Hmm. I guess Trudge Turrets is the... the uh, the skill that I use the least. So I think I want to shift everything over. And put the Blade Lash here. 44 to 200. It's actually not too bad. I mean, it's quite a large range. Also, nowhere near as much damage as her attacks do. But it's something that I can use. Should be better than just attacking. Alright, that is that. I do get the quest marker here, which leads me to assume that I will actually be able to enter through here. But we'll see. Uh, I guess I'll quickly uh, pause the recording. And here we are. Uh, fun fact as my characters were like autom auto walking uh, along this lower border of the screen, um, they repeatedly triggered the uh, area transition, which uh, is interesting why they would walk into that, you know, into that strip of land. And this gate does actually appear to be open. Huh. Who would have thought? This is the smaller western entrance to Monitor Base D. The narrow passage in the protected... Uh, the narrow passage in was protected by a massive steel gate. Then the lava softened the ground below, causing it to shift. The gate now leans out of its frame, and a crack to one side allows easy entry. You have seen no signs of human activity in the base, nor merchants, guards, or observers. You hope to find someone alive inside, but things clearly have not been going well here. Including the fact that these guardians have turned hostile. Alright, um, he's in the spot that I wish she was in. Um, oh yeah, of course. I thought she couldn't reach it through here, but obviously she could. Challenge. Um, attack. Hmm. Guess I'll. Hmm. Should I give my new attack a spin? I should actually put down the snatcher first to get maximum use out of it can't reach. Ugh, oh, that sucks. Uh, well. Guess we'll keep doing this. Oh, come on. She can move. That's something. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and waste your attacks on these turrets that can be knocked back. Also, they don't seem to be taking very much damage from their attacks for some reason. Which I'm totally fine with. There we go. I think that's the first time I saw the razor spray triggering. There we go. Save, just for, you know, safety's sake. You enter Monitor Brace D. There is nobody here. All of the guards and workers are gone. Even a brief look around tells you that this base has been totally lost. 
On the surface, it looks mostly the same. There is dust on the floor, the stones are cracked, everything seems to have lost a little of its color. It seems like a bit of work with a broom and everything will be fine, but it's more than that. The dark magic of the corruption has sunk into the stones, you could feel it, a hostile aura, a vague sensation of dark magic. Humans will not be able to return here. But what happened here? And where is Miranda? If she ever went here, we don't know that. Although admittedly, since the game keeps mentioning her, it's kind of likely that we actually, or that she actually was here. Ruins him, huh? I don't know. Challenge is actually gonna hit these guys. Oh, it did. I mean, hit as an effect with line of line of sight shenanigans and stuff. Oh, they teleport. And these? Why did they decide to run away? What's that all about? It's a little bit annoying. Oh, she's ensnared. Annoying. Annoying. No! Don't. <sighs> okay, focus. And they're returning. What the heck? I don't understand these things. again. Good. Thanks for the clean. Better late than never. All they left behind were some green goo stains on the floor. Not too helpful, unfortunately. Oh, dead end, but with vase full of broken clay. Awesome. That's what I've been dreaming about uh, all my life. As you walk down this passage, a vicious, a vicious wind suddenly kicks up. Not just a draft, a wind. It whips down the hall one way, then another, almost throwing you off your feet. Then a moment later, the wind, face, uh, the wind fades. The storm flies down the hall, kicking up a nasty clod of gust as it goes and is gone. Odd. Indeed. There's also this rune on the wall. Can't do anything with it. But it's there. Oh, I guess there are ruins on all the walls. Or multiple ones, anyway. I also got a frenzy them there. Okay. It leapt and ensnared us again. Done it? Yeah. Sweet. Alrighty. Um. Late Lash for 68 damage. Nah. Kind of disappointing. range from 44 to 100 damage, that was just a pretty bad roll, I suppose. Oh. oh. That wasn't too great either. A bit nasty, but again, nothing I can't deal with. Hey, more dried meat that I've never even eaten. That's okay. I say. I mean, it's obviously okay since I'm kind of making progress in the game. 
Uh, you find the desiccated body of one of Monitor Base D's defenders, a lone human guard. This does not bode well for all of the servants of the pack working here. What is odd is how he died. There are no cuts or burns, but the stone wall above his body is cracked. Something picked him up and threw him against this wall. The, the impact was hard enough to shatter rock. Yeah, not to mention human bones. It's pretty nasty. Grand meeting hall. Wonder what we'll be meeting in there. First, though, well, first let's look at his positions. Uh, just a chain mail, nothing too special. Finish it off with a good crit? Ah, almost. It was a decent try. I'll give you that. Where did that guy just leap? Huh. We got Ruins Infernals here. Not sure I like that. But against Infernals I have my trusty ice magic. To think of it. Uh, yeah, that's what I was afraid. I was afraid of. So those things... Actually, why... Why am I stupid? Should really have focusing my physical attacks on the guys that are immune to Yannick's magic. But oh well. I mean, it's not all his magic, of course, but it is his free magic. Okay, that thing should die from acid nonetheless, or from this actually. Um, yeah, I'll just skip your turn, whatever. So long as it's not a... Or actually, you could use your bow for a change. Yay. Bow kill. Um, so long as it's not a boss monster or something that is immune to his magic. It's just a minor annoyance. Okay, that's that. So the grand meeting hall is all that's left. Hmm, we're at 28 minutes, almost. I guess I'll take a look in here. You enter the base's grand entry hall. It was a majestic hall before everything went wrong. Now the floor is marked with the scars of battle. There is a throne at the north end of the hall. A lone creature sits on it. It is a massive infernal, a beast from the demonic realms. Huh, massive infernal, huh? As I was just talking about uh, a boss immune to fire. Alright, huh. uh, a beast from the demonic realms. A human woman stands before him, talking or pleading. You aren't sure. Some force is holding her in place. And then the infernal sees you. He roars, The other guest has arrived. Come to me, now! The wind that blew past you when you enter the base returns. It picks you up and throws you forward, posing, depositing you next to the woman and the massive infernal. Oh, well, that went fast. Uh, when you're placed in front of the infernal, he waves a hand. Bands of energy appear around you, holding you in place. They aren't enough to match your strength. You hold break. You could break free easily if you needed to. Huh, that's interesting. They are, however, sufficient to hold you in place while the demon speaks. Okay. As the Infernal watches you, you get a brief look at the woman next to you. She's in middle age, with grey hair, dried, cracked skin, and tattered robes. Her journey through the corruption has worn her down. Then the demon clears his throat, and you return your attention to the greater threat. He is a mighty beast, ten feet tall and solid muscle. Lightning clouds have been tattooed on his arms, matching a tornado on his chest. He is no mere imp, but a lord of his kind. He speaks, and his voice is a breeze. A tangle of whistles and gusts, from which words somehow emerge. You come, it is as you said, Miranda. Uh, you are Miranda? The bound woman nods slightly. The demon waves a hand, and a gust of wind harshly shakes you back and forth. You will attend to me. Well, I know. Um, say your peace, demon, but know that I am a hand of Avedon. Avedon, I know it, is why you are bold. 
think you can parley with me, you and her. We are not equals. I am Krimhilas, Lord of Winds. He waits for a moment, looking for a sign of recognition. You've clearly never heard of him, and he is irked. I took his place as my home. Uh, this place is my home. Okay. Uh, why did you come here? The corruption. The pure land. It is full of power. Power to take. It is good. Dry and hot is a strong place. Good for my kind. Uh, what is the pure land? Is what the shades, voices of this place, their name for it, not important. They are dull things, not to be discussed. You destroyed this base? I was the final arbiter. I came, its doom was sealed already. I have no business with you. Well, wait. No, I do. Because, well, several reasons. Release me now. The demon opens his mouth. More wind emerges, and its whistling sound resolves into words once again. No, she comes. You come. You are mine. Must talk. Learn why. Parley. See what you can give. Miranda stares silently at the demon. She doesn't even try to look at you. Hmm. I'm only here for Miranda. I guess. Miranda turns her head and gives you a hateful look. The first reaction you have gotten from her. Yes, Miranda. Pathetic. Dangerous. Has plans. Do they affect me? We'll decide. We all talk soon. Must plan. Go. Prepare. Wait. Wait? Where? Why? Krimhilas raises his hand into the air. His clawed fingers form a fist and he twirls his forearm like a tornado. You try to break loose from your bonds. You are successful but too late. A storm picks up both you and Miranda. As the dust blinds you, you are flung out of the hall. And right into a cell. Well, interesting. Your vision returns. Your head stops spinning. You find yourself in a cell. There are two cells. You are in the northern one. Each has a massive iron gate. Both closed. Miranda is in the other cell. A barred window separates your cells, enabling you to talk. She stands at the window, watching you silently. Her face is utterly impassive. Though she is worn and exhausted, much of her powers and authority remains. It is amazing she survived the journey through the corruption at all, let alone emerging from it, from it ready and eager to confront you. Hmm. We are prisoners. Another pet of Avedon. Huh. Oh. Okay, so I guess I'm free to talk to her whenever I want to. Uh, which is great, because I kind of want to end the episode here, and I, I kind of foresee that talking to her might take a little while. It's also a good thing to look forward to for next episode. So, uh, as always, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button and leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Till then, have a wonderful time, and bye-bye.